Good. We're ready to start whenever you are. All right. Well, it's certainly an exciting weekend uh, for us. Thrilled to to welcome six new draft selections to the kingdom. Uh, was currently working through some uh, some free agent contracts after the draft and won't be able to comment on those guys. But uh, once we get those guys fi- finalized, we'll um, we'll certainly be able to to discuss those guys and, and how they fit into the, the grand scheme of things. But again, uh, really exciting weekend for us. Uh, definitely want to say thank you to my entire scouting, scouting staff. Again, just a tremendous job all year. The coaching staff, all the IT people, everyone involved in this whole process here. There's a, a lot of work that goes uh, behind the scenes, and, and these guys are, are the best at what they do. So, again, uh, couldn't be more excited by the outcome of this draft and, and looking forward to getting these guys into the facility next week and, and kicking off this freaking mini camp soon and seeing these guys in action. So with that, I'll open up and take your questions. Let's go first to Sam Mellinger. Go ahead, Sam. Hey, Brett. Um, this isn't necessarily draft specific, but I'm just worried, wondering, um, does the 17th game, does that change at all your approach to draft, free agency, just kind of roster building in general? I mean, it just puts more of an emphasis on on what we already know, and that's just the battle of attrition. And, and you know, it, it's so hard to stay healthy in this league. And you can have a good team, but – you know, we saw it last year. If, if you can't make it to the end and, and you don't have, uh, you know, enough depth, it, it's certainly going to come into play. So we're always looking for ways to, to build that depth. And we put a high priority on our practice squad. And that's why I think when you look at our roster during the season, we're always active in regards to changing out our practice squads and, and, and keeping an eye on that. But uh, it's just going to put more emphasis on, on, on making sure that we have uh, guys in place to fulfill that next man up mentality and, and continue to identify, um, you know, young, young prospects that, that can quickly grow and develop and be ready for when their numbers call. Let's go next to Pete Sweeney. Go ahead, Pete. Hey, Brett, just wanted to ask you about the one trade you guys made for uh, Noah Gray to trade up in, with the Jets. I was wondering if you just walk through why it was necessary to, to go there and then just your comments on, on why you wanted the player so badly. Well, <laughs> You know, I didn't think um, I shouldn't say I, I we as a staff, I, I, I wasn't sure that this tight end class w- was super deep. Uh, certainly everyone had had pits there at the top of the board. I think that there was um, talent, though, throughout the draft. These guys were a little bit more. Some guys were primary blockers. Some guys had a receiving skill set. And early on, we, we took a liking to Noah Gray and, and just saw him as a really unique inside slot receiver, H-back, fullback. Um, he's a little undersized for, you know, being an inline player. But it, it's so hard to replace Travis when he's not in the game because he has such a unique skill set. And, and Noah has a similar, again, you don't want to pair, compare anyone to Travis Kelsey, but Noah has a, a unique skill set uh, as a slot, bigger tight end receiver. Uh, looking at the board and and kind of working through that, you know, uh, Josh Kanda w- was a guy that, you know, we were certainly interested in. And once we fulfilled that kind of need there at defensive end with Josh, we quickly looked at the board and, you know, we knew that we wouldn't be able to get up all that high. So once we got into that range where we felt we can do a flopping of picks that would get us up, uh, we were going to be aggressive. So we just had to wait. So we were literally waiting to, for 15, 20, 25 picks to go by. Um, we had two different deals in place. Um, we actually had the jets at first, they weren't committing to the, the move. I think there was a team behind them that said they, they would commit to the move. And we had just said that if our guy was still on the board, we'd be interested. Uh, once just got on the clock, they call us back and they said they would be interested, but we were really identifying that trade probably about 20 picks ahead. Uh, we were just waiting. We just couldn't get into that range. We didn't want to surrender a pick. Uh, we could have moved up even, even higher by just surrendering a flat pick, but we, you know, we wanted to work in volume and we identified a few teams that were willing to swap picks and, and we were okay with shifting down later and, and allowing a team to come up higher later. If we can move up a little in that fifth. Um, but you know, that was a guy that is, again, as soon as we selected uh, Josh Kando, we were, we had our eyes locked on. We, we, um, we called Josh and we welcomed him to the kingdom. And then as soon as we got off the phone, we were back in the draft room on the phone, calling every team to see how we can flop picks, get back, get back up there and get Noah. Let's go next to Sarin Petro. Go ahead, Sarin. Uh, Brett, uh, the second round, um, grabbing a center, you guys did a lot of work, obviously, uh, in, in filling that, that, 
position. You talked about kind of a sweet spot being that that mid second, maybe down to like mid third or at least top of the third. Was there any conversation about maybe trading down and the fact that it was, you know, you've turned that offensive line strength into a very, or the offensive line position into kind of a strength now to then go and, and put more resources into it. I would think that, you know, maybe you didn't think Creed was going to be there and, and maybe that changed how you were going to do the dynamics. Yeah, we were fielding calls, I would say about six to eight picks uh, before our selection at 58 and at, and at 62. Uh, we had a couple teams uh, offer potential uh, trade down scenarios Surround. They never really materialized, though. And then once we got on the clock and, and you know, typically when, when teams call you, the deals are good. When you call teams, the deals are bad. Right. So uh, early on before 58, we had some calls and we were monitoring some situations and, and, and we were potentially open to doing that uh, as those six, those five or six picks went by. Uh, the one team kind of backed out on what they proposed and then there was no calls. And at that point, again, once you start making calls, then, then that means you're willing to take, take less in value. Um, and then factor that in with having a guy like Nick Bolton on the board at 58, a uh, great player. And then, then again, at 62 Creed Humphrey, I mean, the value was just way too good. Uh, certainly both those players we were really excited about and, and very fortunate to get. Let's go next to Herbie T.O.P. Go to Herbie. Hey, Brett, good morning. Good morning, Herbie. How you doing? Hey, I'm well, thanks. Uh, you, you guys didn't draft a safety uh, this year. How much of that is a sign of confidence? A Matthew extension could be done sooner than later. Well, well, look, I had mentioned earlier before, once we get through the free agency process and the draft, we'll, we'll sit down. And, and, and last year, you know, we were able to get a lot of our veteran players done during during the summer. And and what, enough can't be said about Tyron and how we feel about him and, and his role both on and off the field here. Um, so but look, I mean, you know, I had said earlier that once we were able to. Um, to execute the Orlando Brown trade that it really just opened us up to taking the best player available. And, and, and that was kind of the, the mentality we, we worked this entire weekend. We were just going to stay, stay true to the board. We felt that, you know, we, once free agency ends, you really like to go in the draft knowing that you can go out there and, and play, play in a game. And, and so again, once the left tackle position was filled, we felt like we can stay true to the board, take the best player available because again, perceived needs this year, you know, has no indication of what the need will be next year. And and we're trying to build continuity and build for the long haul here. And again, as I mentioned, you know, hopefully something gets done with Orlando. So you have him under contract for a while, Joe Tooney under contract for a while, and now Creed Hunt, Humphrey under contract for a while. So if, if you work with that mentality, take the best player available, you're going to have these guys under contract for four or five years. And um, again, once we're able to, to solidify that left tackle position, we really just stay true to the board and took the best player available at every position. Next to Adam Teicher. Go ahead, Adam. Hey, Brett, how you doing today? Hey, Adam, how you doing? Good. Hey, Brett, was just wondering when the plan for the offensive line started to come together. I mean, I can't imagine that you got together the day after the Super Bowl and said, hey, we got to do something here. So, so just curious if you can sort of take us through a timeline a little bit of, hmm. of uh, what your thinking was as the time went on and then into free agency and even through the weekend, this weekend when you got two players. And Brett, I'll have one more question as well. Well, I mean, really, I mean, this, the, I would say that the plan had, had always been in place. And, and even at the start of the season, uh, Austin Ryder was going to be a free agent. And, you know, certainly uh, Eric Fisher and Mitchell Schwartz were um, both getting up there um, in regards to years experience and, and playing in the league. So I think our eye was always on that as our college guys were on the road. And as we started to meet in free agency uh, in that process, and, and, and even before Fish got hurt, you when we met, I think in, in early December or late November, um, our, our blueprint early on was, you know, we're going to really solidify some, some offensive line play in regards to tackle depth, uh, interior depth, and, and where can we find value in free agency? Now, certainly that plan got, got put into ultra gear after fish got hurt. And then it was made aware to us that short uh, Mitch was going to get off season surgery. Um, it was on our radar the whole time, but I think the level of urgency just, really picked up uh, as soon as Eric got hurt and we got word that Mitch was going to get um, surgery. So uh, again, I, I would say that that was probably going to be our priority anyway, in the off season, uh, we probably doubled down a, a little bit um, knowing that some of the veterans that we anticipated back wouldn't be back either. Um, okay. Thanks. And uh, also, and I know you set up at the top that you really weren't ready to talk about at least some of your undrafted mm -hmm. guys that you signed. 
Does that go for all the guys? Because there's one I had a particular question about. Would that go for all of them? Yeah, I mean, typically once we get them under contract, uh, you know, we don't, these guys are going to come in here and have to get a physical and then we'll get them under contract. Um, Fair enough. Yeah, yeah. But once those guys sign, you okay. know, we'll certainly make them available and, and we'll be happy to talk about them. Fair mm -hmm. Let's go next to Mick Schaefer. Go ahead, Mick. Hey, Brett, just wondering, uh, Trey Smith in the sixth round, what kind of value you think you got from, from him at that, at that, at that point? Yeah, obviously we, we feel we got tremendous value, uh, extremely talented player, great person too, smart. Um, so listen, there's been a lot, a lot of talk about Trey and his fall and, um, you know, I, I'm not a doctor, so I don't really want to speak on in regards to his conditions. But um, I think Mike Berganzi was on the other day and he spoke about it. We did a lot of work with him, uh, in particular, Mike Monaco. Um, you know, he, he has, uh, you know, I'll probably defer to Rick on this because I don't want to screw up the language. But, um, you know, he had uh, a situation he was going through and he tried some different medications and some of them worked, some of them didn't. But um, really put a lot of faith and trust in, in Rick and in his training staff. And then um, I was... I would say that of all the players throughout this draft process, I don't think I spoke to Mike Monaco more about uh, than, than Trey Smith. We had a, a ton of dialogue with him and Mike was involved um, a lot in that process, not just with me and my staff and Rick and his staff, but also the people at the University of Tennessee, uh, Trey's agent, Trey himself. So, you know, Mike did a, a really good job of making sure he had all the um, information. And, and again, you know, safety is uh, the most important thing for us and, you know, I would say that in general, we're probably one of the more conservative staffs there are um, in regards to any any gray. We're probably taking people off our board. Uh, so I knew early on that when Mike thought he had an idea of how to fix this, I thought that we were really on to something because, again, um, any area gray, we're usually taking the player off the board because we don't want to put players in that position here in Kansas City. So um, feel good about the work we did on him and and. Again, if everything works out, you're getting a guy that obviously would have been drafted a lot higher, got tremendous upside with him. So we're looking forward to getting him here and, and having Mike and our trainers work with him and getting him up to speed and seeing if we can tap into all that potential. Looks like we've got three hands up. We'll go right down the line, starting with Todd Lebo. Go, Todd. Hey, Brad, I wonder if you have any clarity yet on what the next couple of weeks will look like for these rookies, if you're going to get to have them here have in person and then if you've had any conversations with the the leadership of your your veteran team on whether or not they're going to be virtual or showing up for the OTAs yet yeah so as far as uh you know the um conversation with the leadership and and the OTAs uh coach retailing that with Pat and Tyron and those guys and and obviously our staff was just you know working on the draft uh as far as I know and these rookies should be in here next week and, and you know we should get this rookie camp off next week so uh anticipating all these guys arriving here Wednesday Thursday getting a physical getting geared up and and getting out there and uh going through the first install uh, as a member of the Kansas City Chiefs we'll go next to Sam McDowell go ahead Sam Hey, Brett. Um, when we talked to uh, Ryan Nutt on Saturday, he mentioned that uh, Powell was a guy that could be more of a post-up player. I'm just wondering, did you identify that as maybe a need for you guys, or was he just sort of the next receiver on your board and that happens to be his qualities? It kind of worked out uh, in both regards. He was, again, going back to the mindset we worked all weekend. He, he was the best player available, uh, but he Ironically enough, did fill that that kind of post up position. He's a six foot, two ten, two hundred twelve pound receiver. He's big, strong, physical. Um, you know, the production wise, I mean, he had a, a monster year this year. But leading up to that, uh, the production wasn't always there. He, you know, he had some injuries that he dealt with, and obviously, Clemson has a lot of talent. This year, he really kind of tapped into you know that potential. And, and if you look at the second half of his season last year, that was good as any, any wide out in the country. I mean, he was just ripping off big game after big game and, and, and certainly showed what he can do versus Notre Dame and, and the bowl game versus Ohio state. So love his skill set, And for where we are on our roster with McColl and, and with Tyreek, he's going to be a great compliment, uh, you know, as an ex receiver, got big size, really good after the catch, strong player. So just think it's a great fit um, and, and great value there. And, and we're excited to work with him and see how he can add to an already dynamic offense. And we'll go last to Matt Derrick. Go ahead, Matt. Hey, Brett, thanks for the time as always. Hey, Matt, how you doing? I'm doing well, thank you. Um, you mentioned, you, you briefly touched on uh, Joshua Kando earlier. Um, but just curious, you know, he's ob obviously has incredible skills and athleticism tested through the roof. But 
you know, how do you kind of feel like he is as far as his development and maturity goes at this point? And, and how do you kind of visualize him fitting into the, the, the DN rotation this year? Well, this is a, a prototypical Steve Spagnola DN right here. I mean, 6'5", uh, 265, 268, 35, and 3 eighths inch arm. I think. I mean, he's long, athletic. Uh, he he has he has some 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 work to do in regards to his development. So he had an injury a couple of years ago that really put him back. Uh, he had an ankle injury, I, I believe, in in nineteen. Uh, was off to a really good good. Uh, maybe it was 20, 19 or twenty. I guess it was two years ago. I'm losing track of my years here. But a couple of years ago, he had an ankle injury. Was off to a hot start. Set him back. And then sometimes those injuries are slow. Um, you know, keep it, make it more difficult for you to return. And, you know, he had some lingering effects off that into this season. Uh, but again, going back to the medical staff and the work we've done, uh, like the way that that's healed up now. And, and again, he's a guy that has a, a ton of potential, but his size, length, and overall skill set is exactly what we're looking for. Uh, great kid, smart, will catch on quick. So we think he'll, he'll come in here and, and fit in right away. And, you know, I think the more he gets to be with Brendan Daly in that defensive line room, uh, you know, we, we think that that talent will come out, but I mean, we're excited to work with him a skill set wise. I mean, he has all the tools you look for at that position. Brett, we really appreciate the time. Thanks for joining us. Sure. Thank you guys. All right, guys.